We're going to look at a montage that I made from just over an hour of, of the first segment of their debate. In the first segment, we're going to look at montages of Jordan's communication style. I want you to watch for style. I'm going to talk about style. In the second segment, I'm going to be talking about Sam's style. And I want you to watch his style. Forget the points, be an intelligent person and focus. I'm not judging, I'm just observing style. And then uh, the, 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 the next segment is kind of a summary, really, really quick, you get over a sort of review of style. And I think that Jordan really nails it on some things that are happening. In the first segment, Jordan does a lot of uh, listening. He will ask for clarification. He'll say, uh, I think you think this. Is that correct? He will stop and wait for an answer. Based on Sam's answer, Jordan will say this or that, and it will go in a different direction. Later on, as they get a good ethos going, Jordan is more comfortable with not pausing so long. That's healthy conversation. But when Sam interrupts, it still will, you can see later on, will steer and direct what Jordan's going to say. This is good communication skill. Jordan's doing the right thing with this. Now, there are now, other things Jordan does that I take some issue with, uh, with his style, but we're going to get into that later. And mainly, you know, the, the symposium prerequisite, make your point first. He makes his arguments first. Um, but there are reasons why Jordan does that. Sometimes throwing in a, kind of a surprise idea to get people thinking, stating your arguments first and your point later on, that can be less inflammatory. And, and when you're talking about hot topics, you don't want fists to fly. So Jordan has good reasons for why he puts his arguments before his conclusion, because he doesn't want people to kill each other and, you know, so to speak, and you get fighting and shouting and punching. That, that is, that is smart. So there's some smartness to how he does this. Um, with a good, safe moderator though, it's safe to make your point first. And uh, that's what I would do. Brett was there as a friend to get them together. I would be a strong moderator trying to hope that, you know, hold Jordan accountable to make his points first. Okay, so Jordan uh, builds his case and then presents his point. He does this a lot and he's very open and willing to listen. Now, after that, Brett is very different. Brett talks with absolutes and this is the truth. This, you'll see, you'll see what I'm talking about. Later on, Brett does uh, this thing, I, I, I call it an Ivy League debate tactic. That's, I'm sure you'd agree. And I'm, 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 I'm sure the audience would agree. I invite anyone to go do research and see how right I am. Everyone agrees with what I'm saying. It's so global and universal. No one would dare <laughs> disagree. I'm sure you would agree to this. That's, that's a Harvard debate tactic. And you keep doing it, it becomes mesmerizing and hypnotizing, and eventually it actually pulls Jordan in and he starts falling into it when Jordan should be calling him out on it. Not mean in a mean way, divisive way, but Jordan, I think, should be saying, um, uh, you're doing that tactic thing and uh, let's just, you know, I'm listening, I, I hear you, and, 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 and stay in control, not get hypnotized by it. You don't want to hypnotize each other in a debate. That, that doesn't make for a good debate. So. Um, Sam, uh, he, he, he does this, this thing where he does this, this Harvard, uh, not maybe so much Harvard is an example, uh, not really an archetype, uh, this IV league debate style of, uh, it's, it's a, it's a tactic of, I'm sure you'd agree with me. And I think, I mean, that's true. Right. And, and we believe that. Right. And, and I, I mean, it's obvious. It's so clear. Nobody would, I mean, it's just so clear. Everyone would. God, the devil actually held a, a symposium and agreed with me on this. No one would. I mean, it's, it's, it's that type of talking. The other thing is Sam is, um, Sam seems to have this, this opinion that's clear in his mind and he can't see why Jordan can't see it. And to Sam, it's a foregone conclusion. It's absolute. It's objective fact. Nobody should even dispute it. What the heck? Why can't you just agree with this yesterday, dude? What's wrong with you? And Jordan thinks that these are 
um, uh, subjective opinions. Hold on, I need water. When Sam starts to get frustrated with Jordan, which you're going to see, notice that Sam is, um, he, he just, he can't figure out why Jordan manages to keep squishing out. He just, it's like trying to nail Jello to a wall. I can't get you, what's going on? Why can't you get, why I can't get, I get, you can't, he can't win a debate. Like he can't like, he can't make Jordan speechless. Jordan's always got to come back. He, he just can't get it. And, and, and I think the reason for that is because Sam, I think, has an opinion in his deep somewhere buried down in his thinking that he doesn't know that he has. And if I brought Sam onto the symposium, I would try to help Sam get that out so that he could make his debates a lot better. So watch how Sam, when Sam does this, sometimes it's not desirable, sometimes it's adorable how genuine and authentic Sam is. I, I, like, I really like that about Sam in this. Incredibly authentic. And sometimes Jordan starts pulling his weaselly maneuvers and Sam sees it all over his face. And I love the priceless look on Sam's face when Jordan does that. I'm going to elaborate on these things more as we watch. So I'm going to hit the play button and uh, I'm, I'm going to do like the pastors always wanted to do and, and uh, scale myself down to size here. Realize there are many points that I'm going to elaborate on somewhere later. Uh, scale myself down to size here and uh, maybe move myself out of the way a little bit. Uh, I think eventually Jordan's going to be occupying that. Part. Okay, so I'm scaled down and you can see me. Uh, okay. Uh, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna hit the, we're gonna hit der, der play button here. I'm using VLC. Uh, watch this. Here we go. See, one of the things that, uh, Carl Rogers said, the psych, psych, psychologist was that one of the, a good way to have a discussion with someone is to tell them what you think they think until they think that what you said reflects what they said. Yeah. I've, I've always said that myself. Look, this is a really useful thing to know if you're ever having a discussion with an intimate partner, for example, is that you have to put their argument back to them in terms they agree with. It's very difficult. You yeah, yeah. want to ground a structure no, doing in something solid. He's, he's not. He's, and, and, and there's two. He wants to make sure he understands. There's two it. things you want to avoid. Two catastrophes, thing. let's say. One is the catastrophe that you identified with re religious fundamentalism. I've got to talk about that. And the other is the catastrophe that's associated with moral relativism. Is that, is that reasonable? Yeah, that's good. Is that, you okay, see what good, he did there? And then maybe your second priority is something like, you know, you see undue suffering in the world. Plenty of it. This is called summarizing. And you would think that things would be better if that wasn't the case and that this morality, whatever it's going to be, is at least going to part, ground itself in part on the presupposition that the less undue suffering in the world, the better. Is that right? Is that, is that also Is that what reasonable? you're saying? Yeah, I would just add understand? to that the, the positive okay, side okay. of the so continuum as well. Well-being for me subsumes all of those possibilities. Okay, okay. well, so I, so I focused on the suffering element, I think, as I've done in my own work, because I actually think it's easier to zero in on in some sense. Like, I think it's easier for people. Yeah. I think okay. you lay out the argument in the moral landscape kind of like this. I think it's easier, perhaps, to gain initial agreement between people on what might constitute a generalized ethic to concentrate on what we don't want. Yeah. I'm not saying that what we do want is unimportant, but it seems to me to be harder to get a grip on. We don't want Auschwitz. We don't yeah. want the Gulag Archipelago. So, and, is that and right? There are and, and, those, and I would add, okay. to just Please, closing the door to moral relativism here, those who do want Auschwitz are wrong to want Auschwitz. I mean, okay. moral, obviously, yeah. Auschwitz only okay. happened did because some people did want kinda, Auschwitz. I, mean, I agree with not Sam, but the victim his style, side, that's, the that's just, it's there. And wrong. So, it's, it's crucially style, for me style. is the just claim observe, that... Observe. Be an observer of people. I'm a realist. I'm a moral realist. And what, what realism means is that it's there, that there are right and wrong answers yes. to questions of this kind. And, and, and really good you point. can that's, not know what you're missing. In fact, we I almost like certainly we don't like know that. what we're missing on yeah. questions of human value. And, then, and our job is to discover just how good okay, life can be and here. just what variables are making it needlessly horrible. Make life to, better. To we need, we need a better life. All of that and Let's get a better in a, life. In a better, uh, and better world. A better world. Okay. Well, so, okay. Yeah. okay. So, oh, of course. Yeah. Clap. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Better world. I mean, who would object to that? Okay, I'm going to so, talk about so that's that a, later. That's a, that's better a lot world of points is not a grandstand so, point. 
So it doesn't seem to be later. religious fundamentalism okay. per se that's crucial to your argument. Now, no, it's not. I'm so what's so going just on. To see, he stopped. Jordan that. stopped. See, so he's is it Jordan's reasonable listening. to assume that the associate? Am I understanding We've already right? established, at least in principle, now, that there's agreed, an association that, between so the totalitarian regimes. Let's say. Okay. And, dog, and dogmatism. Right? Yeah. And the dogmatism Conflict? that characterizes okay. religious belief. Yeah. Yeah. What do you right? think, although me, at least in principle, I the, the you. secularist talk totalitarian talk to me. states tell me. and the religious fundamentalist talk. totalitarian states do differ in one important regard, which is that the religious types ground their axioms in God and the secular totalitarian types don't. And so th there's got to be something about totalitarianism per se that's independent of that's associated with religious belief in the manner that you just described, but that's not particularly associated with the belief in God. There's something that makes them, that's a commonality between them. And so, do you have well, any sense of what that might be? Please, please, well, I, in I a, would, you know. We have look, to be very careful about equating okay, all the religious I, texts. I, I, I want to and be careful. I do actually think that yeah. you are careful about that. Okay, you but did. But that's something we can okay, have but a discussion but, but, okay, but I don't. No, I agree with you there. I, I, so, I want to know where we agree, at all. You know, I'm not trying to put words in your which you kind of sent at Sam already is, do you see a hierarchy of unacceptability between different religious doctrines? I mean, and I would say yes. you acted. Okay, you fine. Okay, okay, you did. So, okay, okay, okay. So you told me, and I said, now, have you. Now, Slavery is condoned oh, well, in gotta, the Bible, gotta, gotta in both this. Testaments, on, and in the Quran. Hold on. There's I'm no getting away from that. Technology here. Okay. Do, do you see what. what do, do you, do, are you picking up what just happened there? Do you see Jordan's style? He's open. Now listen, I'm going to be interrupting this because if you want to go see the debate, go watch the debate. This is my analysis of it. And it, I, want, I, I want you to see and observe people and see what's going on. Okay, so uh, rewind here. I want you to watch Sam's style. Jordan was always listening. Please interrupt. Please correct me. I'm assuming you're right. Okay, I'm going. I make my point. Yeah, okay, I make my next point. Saving time, saving time. You want to talk? Okay, please, please. Oh, oh you said it. Well, then I don't need to. Great. Okay, Sam... Uh, talks and Jordan is receptive and changes what he's going to say because Jordan wanted to make sure that Sam that, that that Sam had spoken his idea, written whatever, and that Jordan understood him correctly. So they first understand what the other guy's saying before they know whether they agree with it or not. First, you got to know what people are saying. Very important. And many people in debates, especially in American politics these days, don't do that first. And Sam's Sam's approach is very very different. There's a lot of Ivy League and a lot of absolutist stuff. So uh, we're going to go through and listen to that now. Slavery is condoned in the Bible, in both Testaments, and in the Quran. Is there's no getting no, away from that. No, no getting away from that. Very it's, easy to it, get there it's because easy. some it's of the, easy to get the claims there. in the book are so not easy. at all hard to parse. Not in fact, hard. In so fact, many of them hard, can only be honestly only interpreted honestly. one way. So to take again an example that will be. Not inflammatory. Not, not inflammatory uh, to you. To, not in, because you're easily inflamed. Not, I'm going to use an example that's not going to inflame you. Since when is Jordan ever, you know, easily inflamed and mad? Okay, just look at what Sam's doing. I, you know, I'm, I kind of praise to him for doing this. This is kind of friendly uh, provocation here. Good, bad, see what Sam's doing. Not to inflame you and get you all <laughs> excited. <laughs> poke, 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 jab, jab, provoke, provoke. Uh, if you don't want to have a fist fight, this is not how to do stuff. Sam is smart and knows that he can get away with it. And that's one of the endearing things I like about Sam. He can get away with it in this situation because he knows that Jordan's not going to lose his cool. Um, okay, so just observing, not judging. I do kind of think it's entertaining, and I, I'm kind of glad. I wouldn't do it, but I'm glad Sam did, and I think it was all right. You, but uh, makes the now, point. But look at this. Sam's looking away. See, he just kind of did that little jab thing at 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 Jordan, and he's in, and he's like, and for you not to, you know. Uh, you know, not to inflame you, uh, but and I'm not. I'm not going to look at you. See, he's not. Jordan was looking at Sam the whole time. Jordan, Sam is not looking at Jordan here. Sam is looking down. He's he's not. He's not receptive. He's going on. He's not prompting Jordan to talk. He's not asking for a response. If Jordan responds, he kind of talks over him and keeps going. Like Sam is making his point. It's a foregone conclusion. He's going to stick to it. Be quiet until I say it enough until you agree with me. That's his style. Uh, right or wrong, probably not good. Not entirely wrong. We'll talk about it later. Notice the style. Here we go. 
It just says that the, the remedy for it theft says, in the Quran is to cut just, the, the hands off a thief. It just I mean, says you, 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 th it, that I mean, is I, the unambiguous, unambiguous injunction. I mean, it's, it's, it's not an argue. allegory. It's not. You can't it's argue. Not, it. it's, so, so now, the, do you hear? Do you hear Jordan? Jordan's agreeing. With, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is an I've notice this telling someone that it's unambiguous. You can't, you can't oppose it. You can't object to it. You can't possibly say otherwise. You, you can't, you could never, no way. That's the Ivy League debate tactic. It's hypnotic, it's hypnotic. It hypnotizes and Jordan's getting pulled into it. Look, it may be that obvious, but the purpose of a debate is to prove it not just expect that people agree with you. You're supposed to prove it, dude. This is kind of lazy, but it's also like, it's like white collar lazy. You have to, you have, you to, have to indulge have to. some needless immiseration of other people. Oh, that's a subjective opinion. He's talking about slavery. You know, you have to, needle, you know, he's, 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 he's got an opinion, but he's ramming it as truth. Watch what he's doing. Right. Right, and right, right. So See, right. Right, right. That's Ivy League. Right, I'm right. Right. Th th this is a thing that people do. It's it's actually a tactic that you can use in a debate. You got to know people are doing it. There's no. I don't think Sam knows that he's doing this. I don't think Sam knows that he's doing this. Net damage being done here by this belief system. No, these are, I would argue, in many cases, psychologically normal argue. people. They're normal. People. Once I, you grant that, and this grant. is, I mean, this is where you, there's a, there's a tension between you know how we pursue the same goals. Because I know like, you're going to disagree with just me. established, we have many of the same I know, goals. I know, but I don't want you to disagree insofar with me. Insofar as you make, you. they can also hold on to everything they love in Christianity or fear to lose. And it's, it's undoubtedly mostly Christianity, but... Uh, undoubtedly, but whatever, most, any but, but I don't know. Look at this. Look what's happening here. Okay. Now, Jordan's over there, the shrink... And, and he's just listening and he's being quiet and that's provoking Sam to talk more. See, see, Jordan's a counsel. He's, he's got a background in clinical psychology. See, right now, the shrink is over there provoking the client to talk and Sam's on the couch and Jordan's not talking and that's making Sam uncomfortable and right, fill the silence and you think, oh, I didn't provoke you to answer. What Sam would be smart to do at this point is to stop and say, Jordan, please answer me. What do you think? But Sam's not listening at all. He just talks. So he doesn't know to do that. On my podcast, I would stop Sam and ask Jordan how much he agrees. I'd say, Sam, you look like you want a response from Jordan. Stop. Jordan, what do you think? And, and, and I would make sure that we know what we're doing and how we're talking. Here we go. Let's my concern is that it keeps us shackled and, and it would be much better. I think you would agree. I think you would agree. I think one of the ideally, 10 commandments had been don't keep slaves. Not necessarily. Daenerys Stormborn thought so, but she learned the hard way. There's problems with that. We've got the formulation of the constitution. We've got the fact that the, the Bible uh, doesn't have that. And then George R.R. R. Martin does put forth a good argument. That's another podcast I'm going to come to, but not necessarily. The, the terrible, horrible thing about slavery is that it's, it's like a jigsaw, it's like a saw movie, it's like a horror movie, where if you save yourself, you, you kill yourself and everybody. It, it, it's, it's like you kill everybody and yourself by trying to save yourself. Slavery is people, if you think that one of the Ten Commandments ending slavery would have ended slavery, you don't understand how incredibly evil slavery is. It's really, really evil. I, I don't, I, we don't know slavery, so we don't know how evil it is. Let's, let's take it for granted that God is good and that if he didn't end slavery right away, it was for good reason. Let's just assume that that could be possible, but it's a foregone conclusion. It's so clear. I mean, you can't deny it. Uh, I don't think he's open to that. And that's why he can't stick his finger on Jordan. And that's why Jordan keeps buzzing around the room. And if they're on my podcast, I would be talking with him about this. I would be going through that. And if Sam wants to make other points, I, I, I would invite him to. But nobody's talking about this. Nobody's talking about the problem of slavery, the, the, like the pro, like intellectual academic, the problem of slavery. And that's, I mean, the Constitution, they tried to get rid of it, the Constitution, the South wouldn't let them. So they played this weaselly game to slowly get rid of it, which 
kind of worked. Like 100 years later, it was gone. And 100 years after that, civil rights. And we're still got a new battle every day because slavery is so evil, it takes hundreds and hundreds of years to get rid of it. And you're still working to get rid of it in a new, different battle every day. You can't keep fighting yesterday's battle. It won't work because it's that's how evil slavery is. Now, nobody's talking about that. George R.R. R. Martin puts it in, in, in the Song of Ice and Fire, Game of Thrones, uh, about the problem of slavery. The Constitution's got it there. These men are talking about slavery, but they're not talking about this? You know, come on, guys. Yeah. But see, the yeah. audience thinks that's funny. Oh, a Ten Commandment banning slavery. Huh. You know, that, that'd be great. Ha, 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 ha. Bible's so stupid. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, guys. And Jordan's agreeing with him. Jordan, mm, mm, yeah, mm, yeah, yeah, mm. Bad idea, Jordan. Bad idea. I mean, we, there, there's certainly one we could swap out for that one. Mm. And mm, mm, that's mm, shocking, mm. and it's not an accident, right? And it would be much right. easier to stem cell research. Stem cells, right? Because right. I just don't, there's no question that no most question. generations of Christians there's, there's no who read Revelation there's no, there's, there's expected no, no the question. world to end in some literal sense of this kind of fa phantasmagoria. I mean, there was, there was I mean, going to be a beast. There was going to be. Was, I mean, this, I mean, this, I mean, so, you know, so, undoubtedly, how, they thought this would happen in their own time, you know, under how Rome. They, and of course, what does that do but, to okay. Moses' Do you see his style? Do you see his style? The, this is not a narrative. This is instructions laws about of what to do. Watch Sam. We're going to come back to this later. Watch Sam's face. Watch. Look at his face. Take over that land. Look at Sam's face. Right. Right. Yeah, right. Whatever. You're not saying right. Listen, right here, when forget the kind, we are going to come back and listen to this later and talk about it intellectually, but watch the body language. Sam's face is priceless. I'm so glad he has this face. Jordan acts like he's agreeing, and it's actually smart for Jordan, but Jordan is not agreeing with anything. Jordan is shedding his armor so that he can be light footed and run in for the strike attack. He, I mean, it's going to be a flash. That's what Jordan's doing. He doesn't agree with squat. Jordan is shedding his armor. He's abandoning so many arguments, so he has such little ground to defend in order to win. And he's he's dropping all of his weapons because he's getting out his spear, no armor, and he's going to charge and go boom. That's what Jordan's doing in all this. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, sure. Um, mm -hmm, right. Yeah, mm -hmm, right. And Sam knows that Jordan's doing it because because Sam knows Jordan. So it, and now now Sam he wants everyone to agree with him without a debate yesterday. That's his attitude. So all of this comes out and you see it happen right here. Watch Sam's face. But see, Sam's face is a critique on Jordan. And I think it's correct. Now, if I were in Jordan's shoes, I would do what he's doing. If I were in Sam's shoes, I'd probably do what he's doing. This is just fun to watch. Watch this. About um, killing husbands and taking the wives. Yeah, the yourself. Old Testament's a brutal document. Absolutely brutal. And so my point would be, I don't, I don't know that reading that portion. What? Um, I, I can't. Of the end, you, even if you call what, the end you don't of the agree to that. Don't mm -hmm. say I don't that, that, Jordan. It oh, Moses yeah. Mm, right. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Hypothetically, if you take the New Testament seriously, it does. There you go again. There you are. I, I can't. It doesn't look, it on every I'm going to talk. The problem. This is slavery a, is a very straightforward it's case. It's straightforward. It's yesterday. Agree with me. Clearly, the, the I mean, the, Daenerys, Stormborn, and the Night's King agree with me on this. I mean, Sauron and and Gandalf and Saruman and the orcs and the elves all agree with me on this. The devil and Jesus agree with me on this. What is your problem? What Bible thumpers what? of the South who were defending slavery with reference to the text I'm not gonna defend felt that. they were on firm I mean, ground. And I would just they, I would invite anyone to read invite anyone. the, the I mean, New Testament to see and the Old Testament Daenerys, say about slavery to see that they were I'm on right. fairly firm ground. I mean, that, just that the, see the fairly firm, of you know, the, at least. Of the honest reading was honest, on the side if you're of honest anyway. clearly, clearly, we can, we can keep clearly. Slaves, right? Ivy Jesus, well, Jesus, Jesus never envisioned Jesus, even the world Jesus agrees with without it. slavery, and Jesus he admonished does. We're slaves about to serve slavery. their masters well but, and to serve their style. Christian masters I mean, especially well. Especially, so. the English Protestants wouldn't have agreed with that because, like I said, they were at the forefront of the fight against so, slavery. Okay, so but, uh, but I think they were clearly influenced by something outside the text. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. Jordan, you shouldn't concede. You're making this harder than it is, and yeah, my you're concern making, is why? 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 You're making this harder than it is, Jordan. You should have agreed with me already. Okay, do you see the style that's happening here? Okay, I just want you to see the style. And look at poor, poor, poor Brett there in the middle. I mean, look at that guy. I feel sorry for him. He's He loves both of these guys, and he's, he's breaking down, and we want to salvage this. Now, um, to this point, uh, we're not right. done Well, yet. I don't think yeah. I am, Sam, because... 
Okay. All right. So you say this um, is a bad life. Now, this is the place where Jordan is going to basically summarize what I think is going on with why Sam's irritated. Now, there's so many more things to say. This is another good one. I really think, again, this absolute, Sam wants opinions to be accepted as absolute fact, and he wants it without a debate yesterday. And he doesn't know. He, he, Sam's not a bad person. Sam's not, Sam's not doing this on purpose. But I think that it makes it difficult for him to win against Jordan because he's doing it. And I, I think that he doesn't know that he's doing it. I think Sam has an opinion deep down inside somewhere about something and that he doesn't know that it's there. And that's what's driving Sam to do this. And I'm talking about it on a communication style level. And Jordan is going to explain it on an epistemological level as far as their difference of opinion. So Jordan's going to say why their opinions disagree this way because you think it's absolute fact and I think that that's an opinion, a moral claim, an opinion. And that's where you put the stake in the ground. No, you want it to be a fact. Jordan's saying that about Sam's opinion. I'm saying that about why Sam has the style that I've been describing. And you say this is a good life. And, and then you make a side move, which I would say is that that's an objectively verifiable fact. I would say, I don't think it is an objectively verifiable fact. I think it's a fundamental moral claim. An opinion. And I think that's where you put your stake in the ground. He wants, Sam wants his opinion to be treated as a fact. And he would say, no, 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 no it's not opinion. It is a fact. And, and it, you can clearly see. And he's going to use Ivy League to defend it. No, Sam. If you're going to ask people to believe that your opinion is a fact or that you're going to, we think it's an opinion, but you think it's a fact, you're going to have to prove it to us. That's part of being a not lazy debater. And if you're man enough, Sam, you're going to come on my podcast and I'm going to show you this. And I want you to talk. I want to see what you do, but I want to coach you to do better because Sam, I believe in you and you could do better, Sam. And I want you to do better. And Jordan, uh, I've got some stuff to say to you about this. Now, and I would say when I, okay. Right now, what we're doing is right where where I dropped off with with Jordan. We're going to go for about two more minutes and be done with this. There's about two more minutes of video. I'm going to let Jordan pick up where he just left off. He says that's where you put your stake in the ground, and we're picking up where Jordan left off, and then uh, we're going to see and watch them kind of come around full circle eventually end. And I'm going to sort of stop talking because I've been done so much of this splicing and dicing. We're going to get to the end of their hour where it comes back full circle and you'll kind of see where this went. I think that I'm not going to comment so much on that, but just showing you that part is justice and fairness to how this really was going. I think that if I don't let them just kind of talk and let it speak for itself here in the end, this last segment does it. With that, I'm doing justice. If I don't share this, then I don't think I'm doing a good job as a journalist or, you know, whatever that type of work. read that, I thought, well, if you take your jungle story... Hmm. which you've extracted from a bunch of horrors and, and compiled. That's not necessarily bad. And you take your positive story, which you've extracted from a bunch of horrors. Sam knows or he a can bunch of, 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 and Jordan of would quasi-utopias, let's say, and compiled. You're two-thirds of the way to a landscape of hell and heaven. Right. Well, so then why not continue the abstraction and say, look, what we're really trying to avoid here is hell. Oh, yeah. What we're really trying yeah. to move towards is heaven. Yeah, but oh yeah. But, oh, well, yeah. No, as soon as I mean, you do that, you're my in a name, religious landscape. No, no oh. but my name for hell is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, now here's now in just a minute, I've I've got to explain this. In just a moment, Sam is going to say. I'm trying to figure out what they were clapping for. He has, uses different words. I could quote them exactly, but he's going to say, I want to, what were they, what do they think you said? I, I, they, they, they're clapping about something. What was it? I don't think Jordan's audience knows specifically. They're, Jordan, well, it's not Jordan's audience. It's Jordan's enthusiasts. Remember, the Jordan enthusiasts in the audience are happy about this. They're clapping. And I don't think they know why. The reason why is the purpose of a debate was just accomplished. Do you know the purpose of a debate? Here's your chance to write it down and get kudos. The purpose of a debate is to understand the other person first and then go into their arguments and prove to them how their own opinion disagrees with itself. 
to prove that their own worldview contradicts, that their own system contradicts. Th that's really what, in, in a general sense, that's, that's what a debate is kind of sort of basically aiming for. And if the better you can do that, the better you're going to do in a debate. And Jordan just did that. He says, well, now, but he says, you know, heaven, hell. Well, I go there. Okay, go there. But you're in a religious landscape now, buddy. And that's where you don't want to go. Hmm. And, and so in, by the, the core, essential, unwritten, universal rules of what makes a debate good or bad, Jordan just told him. Sam's been done tolded. He, Sam been told now. And so be, because Sam's been told, the Jordan enthusiasts are happy. But the reason that Sam was told, so to speak, is because Jordan did put forth a pretty compelling argument for where Sam's contradicting himself. Sam takes the smart route, and first of all, he makes some good crowd-pleaser comments about the audience. If I were Sam, I'd do the same. Sam's got a great comeback coming. I love it. I'm glad he did it. Um, Sam is then going to, to make the better position, the smarter move, and he's going to say, okay, we've got stuff to talk about now, don't we? That's a good hour intro for our remaining three hours. Uh, and, and Brett's also going to come in and be the good moderator, and you're going to watch this come full circle. So I'm going to let most of the rest of this speak for itself. And, and so this is very interesting right. because... Like, he's still speechless. He, the, the Jordan enthusiasts think the cat has his tongue. We're talking about this at dinner. Cat got your tongue. We're talking about this at dinner and how the, the the overlap or lack of overlap between our audiences. And so, like, I just heard from your audience there. And they're not an audience. They're enthusiasts. You they're, might have heard what, from the odd convert. But, right. I don't what's like What's amazing to me is so like. I have to do some work to figure out what point they think you made. Right, because they only think it. Because, ha, ha, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait, wait. No, no. Hold on. Those are the same. I said if you're going to produce a fiction, nervous. why not go well, right to the end? Because okay, so, you did produce a fiction. And, and, okay. it, it, you, you can tell stories by way of communicating certain ideas. I mean, that's obviously, so, I mean, I'm not saying stories aren't incredibly powerful and useful. And inevitable, right? It's like we we you use. Wait, I think you listening? are. You're, no, you I'm, might I'm, not saying you might back? not be saying that they're that I love they're you, Jordan. they're I not really they're I not inevitable, you. but you I are debating their utility and power. And, and Jordan's right because about you. No, no, you said no, that no, you don't okay. need the story as an intermediary. Okay. Okay. So, so the, now we have a few doors open here, which I think we should okay. we, we should extract the most out of these areas that we've touched and not run on to something else. So okay, okay. So I'm going to stop this particular analysis there, and I'm going to pick up later. What, what we've got here in this is, is I've been doing an analysis of their communication styles. And I think that these could improve. Now, in the remaining segment, we're going to look at several different tenets that they argue. And I'm going to talk about content and why I think from a content perspective, they could have done much better. And that's going to be more juicy and meaty. Cheerio. See you then.